2023 marks the 50th anniversary of Secretariat winning Thoroughbred Racing's Triple Crown. I'm Michael D. Lee, host of the Saturday Sportsline Memories channel on YouTube. Just a few days ahead of this year's Preakness, I interviewed John Tweedy, an attorney and filmmaker whose mother, Penny Chenery, was the subject of his documentary, Penny and Red, The Life of Secretariat's Owner. I wanted to find out, 50 years on now in 2023, just what impact his mother and Secretariat had back then and now. Here's that interview with John Tweedy. Okay, very good. Um, just uh, a few questions uh, that I had. Uh, you know, the documentary is now 10 years old, and uh, are there any thoughts about the documentary that you have uh, looking back that uh, you think uh, might uh, might be worthwhile? Any insights, in other words, that you've gathered 10 years after the documentary was made that when you made it, uh, it didn't occur to you? Well, the documentary, Penny and Red, uh, really an effort by myself and my mother to deepen the... Uh, the conversation about who she is as a person. The uh, the documentary was made shortly after the Disney movie Secretariat came out, and uh, and the 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 reality of my mother is that she was not a, a Disney princess either in her own self concept or in the way she lived her life, and so she was interested in um, kind of sharing uh, a deeper and. Uh, a more nuanced side to her personality and to her life story. And uh, so she did that, and I was very pleased to produce the documentary, and uh, and I feel like that goal was accomplished. Uh, going back to 1973, John, um, did uh, your mother have any concerns about Secretariat going into the Preakness? Well, if you look back on the interviews that she did at the time, uh you know, uh, her horse, Reva Ridge, had lost the Preakness, uh, had won the Belmont and, and the Kentucky Derby, of course, but had lost the Preakness. And so she was coming off of that uh, unhappy experience the year before, and so that did color her uh, perception. But on the other hand, uh, Secretariat's performance in the Kentucky Derby was so commanding and the secretary was in fine shape uh, going into the Preakness, and so I think she felt confident, even though she'd had uh, that bad experience the year before. And after Secretariat won the Preakness, beating Sham once again as he had in the Derby, did your mom believe at that point after the Preakness, John, that victory in the Belmont for Secretariat was a foregone conclusion? No, not a foregone conclusion because she'd been in the game both on her own behalf and uh, with watching her father, you know, since the 1950s. And there, <laughs> there aren't foregone conclusions in most area of life, but there certainly are not in horse racing. And uh, so she didn't consider it a foregone conclusion. But you know, Secretariat's move on the um, on the far turn in. Uh, uh, in the Preakness was just astonishing. Uh, the way that he went around horses and uh, went to the front and then uh, and then finished off Sham uh, was really, really uh, a uh, an astonishing um, performance. And so I think everyone after that and after the Derby felt very positive about his chances. And of course, as we all know, Secretariat won the Belmont and thus the Triple Crown. What did Secretariat, uh, looking back now 50 years, John, what do you think that horse meant to your mother's legacy? Well, Secretariat was truly uh, a force of nature, both in terms of his physical prowess, but also the impact that he had on the culture uh, in 1973. It was a time when America was deeply divided. Uh, there was uh, the Vietnam War was still going on. The Watergate hearings were still going on, and uh, and you know the country was looking for a hero. And uh, and Secretariat and my mother uh, stepped up to that plate and presented uh, an image and a story and a uh, a, a phenomenon 
that people of all persuasions were able to stop what they were doing, look up, and focus on this common uh, narrative of this horse. Uh, and, and that was certainly my mother's legacy, uh, both from the standpoint of those events themselves, but then from the standpoint of who she had become as a celebrity. She really was a celebrity to the end of her life. And, and she was able to manifest that inclusive, broad-based uh, uh, connection with fans of all walks of life, you know, until she died. Uh, and and uh, she, for the reasons I went into in the documentary, she had had life experiences that really enabled her to connect with all kinds of people, and she prided herself on that. And... Uh, it, and so, and she continued to do that for the rest of her life. You know, so the thoroughbred owners before that, and to some extent since, are a kind of a snobby club, uh, and they don't necessarily have a have the skills or even the desire to reach out to the broader public. Whereas my mother did, and she knew how to do it, and she wanted to do it, and Secretariat exuded the star power. And so that's what she did, and that's what she's always done until she died in, you know, uh, 1917. I mean, uh, 2017, rather. Yeah, it, it seems uh, y- your mother was very well educated. She was very familiar with horses. Of course, the experience of Reaver Ridge, so she wasn't a rookie coming in, certainly to the Kentucky Derby in 73. It seemed to me, John, that uh, based on everything I've I've read, I saw the movie, I, I want to watch the documentary at some point, but I've seen some roundtable discussions with you and Bill Knack and uh, some others about the documentary. It seems to me, once the Triple Crown was achieved, your mother had become self-actualized, to use a psychological term that was coined by Abraham Maslow uh, back in the day. She realized her potential at that point after Secretariat's Triple Crown, but in looking back, John, are there any goals or hopes in horse racing that you think your mother did not achieve? Well, first of all, I think what you just said is very well stated. I think that that uh, self-actualization is a concept that applies to my mother and, and uh, where she had arrived at uh, after the Triple Crown. Um, as to unrealized uh, goals, you know, when you're in the horse racing game, you always want another champion. Uh, you're always trying to, uh, you know, roll the dice again and roll a seven. And, of course, Secretary was a seven plus or a seven cubed or whatever. Um, and and she never achieved that level of success again. But once you've tasted it, you want to, you want to taste it again. And, and, of course, the odds in horse racing are, are um, against that, you know, the... Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's, I think, well, these are old statistics, but in, back in the day, it was less than 10% of thoroughbreds that are bred for the track ever even race, uh, let alone win a race, let alone win a stakes race, let alone become, you know, a triple crown grade. So the, the odds are, are poor <laughs> against having another champion. And, you know, and frankly, the odds reasserted themselves despite her skill and and uh, bloodstock as a breeder and everything else. You know, you just you don't you don't win all the time, uh, or even most of the time. And and that was true for her. So even right up to the end of her life, she was still wanting to breed another champion and race another champion. And she kept her hand in the game. It just didn't work out. John, I've admired your mother, Penny, for being uh, strong-willed, independent, very intelligent, and having a sense of direction, knowing uh, where she wanted to take her life. Uh, Now, looking back, uh, since your mother has passed, what life lessons did your mother impart to you as a very successful attorney and filmmaker? Oh, I think my mother taught me a lot in various ways. I think she was uh, a very focused on her goals. She was also extremely um, able to to connect with all kinds of people, and, uh, you know, I've tried to live that way as well. I think, um, again, y- you, uh, you miss out on a lot if you believe that certain people are somehow beneath notice or 
that you can only or only want to associate with certain kinds of people, people who agree with you or people who are from where you're from or people who are the same color or creed or whatever it is. Uh, my mom never believed that. She was open to all kinds of people. And uh, and I think that's a lesson I've taken to heart as well. And, and my life has been enriched because of it. John, I'd like to thank you very much for your time. All the best to you. Penny Chenery received many awards and accolades in the years following Secretariat's Triple Crown win. She also helped found the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation, dedicated to the humane treatment of retired racehorses, and she was posthumously named a Pillar of the Turf, the highest honor bestowed by the National Museum of Racing at Hall of Fame. Thanks for listening. I'm Michael D. Lee.